Hey everyone, it's Revildert, and today we're gonna do some art. You may know me from hanging around in view. Maybe you've seen me in some chat rooms. You might have seen me in some previous videos where I showed Joey how to build a room. Or maybe you've seen my art on Instagram. I do a lot of the weekend outfit challenge art as well as the InView advent calendar last year. So today is all about edits and I'm very excited to finally be able to do this video for you guys. I've been wanting to do it forever. Top Edit Tuesday is my favorite day of the week because I get to see all your guys' art. I feel very inspired by a lot of the creativity that comes out of you guys and today I want to give back by showing you some simple tips and tricks on how to improve your workflow and to hopefully bring your edits just to the next level. As a professional graphic designer I do use Photoshop on a day-to-day -day basis just because it's intuitive, it's responsive, and I love being able to customize my own brushes, textures, and patterns. So if you can afford it I highly recommend getting it, but I know it's out of reach for a lot of people. There are a lot of free and expensive alternatives that you can use instead. Procreate for the iPad, GIMP, Krita, even your mobile image editing software, they can all give you some really good results. You can even find your own resources online, brushes and textures for GIMP or Krita, or you can make your own. That being said, the best tool I found to build a good edit is actually using InView itself. I'm going to show you how to build a strong foundation using high quality items for your avatar, dynamic poses, and ambient room lighting to bring your edits to life, and I'm going to put it all together using GIMP today. So I'm going to be working with Zoe, because I know you all miss her. Now I love her hair right now, it's got a I woke up like this look, but oftentimes when I do edits I like to keep the face clear. Obviously I want to keep it that signature Zoe pink, so I'm searching the newest hairstyles under Rose. Oh this one's super cute! It's kind of whimsical and has that effortless look to it. Now that we have the hair, I want to boost up her skin a little bit. But because I changed her hair to a warmer pink, I feel like she's all one color now, so I want something with a little more contrast. Ooh, I'm immediately drawn to the glow here. I'm gonna see if I can find some makeup to bump this look up a little bit. And one of my favorite tricks is to look at the head of the avatar, find the derivations of the mask so the makeup fits perfectly. Click more information to bring up the web page of the item, see what head it's derived from, and look at the derivations of the mask of that head. This lip stain is cute. I think she's starting to have a very fresh summery vibe. I'm not mad about it. So I found some clothes and I guess Zoe's going to the beach today. We've got the skin and it's beautiful with a lot of detail and depth. That's going to save us a lot of time later when we edit. We found a hair that's got a lot of movement and character. Now for those final pieces, don't forget the details like hands and feet. You know InView feet are freaky, so since Zoe's going to the beach today, we want to give her some bare toes. I found these ones right under shoes, and they're just adorable. Right now, she has the basic InView hands with a scaler on, but I can find something with a lot more detail by searching under gloves. This shows a ton of cute manicures, or you can search perfect hands here, which will reshape the hand and add details to the nails. Next up, I'm going to look for neck fixes. These are good for hiding the Barbie head where it attaches at the neck. Zoe doesn't have much of that going on right now because of her hair, but if your avatar is wearing a ponytail, you might want to try it out. This also can mess up your shoulders a little bit, so if you do have a neck fix on and you're wearing a tank top or bare shoulders, you might want to take it off. The next thing I'm going to show you is body lights. Now, these are great for taking photos because they brighten up the avatar and hide clunky shadows that can look like dirt smudges. They will affect the ambient light of the rooms though, so keep that in mind if you're in a public room taking pictures. The last thing I'm going to show you is how to search avatars for dynamic poses. I'm looking for something that's going to show Zoe's personality and give some natural movement, which is important for still photos. I love these avatars by Dolly and Toupees. Ice Kids also has some really fun stuff. You can mix these avatars with specific body part movement items. Cinderella with an S makes some head, hand, and arm movement items that allow you to adjust your poses slightly. These really come in handy. Heyo! No pun intended. This is the beach room I chose because it has a wide open sky and a simple horizon that I can take multiple screenshots of and stitch them together. I like to take photos of the background and avatars separately, not only because it gives me greater freedom to mix and match the lighting, but also because it gives me more freedom later on. We're going to take a snapshot of the room, but just move the camera to the side a little bit so Zoe isn't in the frame. If you type star high res snap, it'll capture the room with furniture and any avatars in the frame. I'm going to take one from above 
and from lower down. I'll show you why later. Now we're going to take a snapshot of Zoe, but I don't think I want to use this room. It has an overhead directional light, and I'm thinking I want to do a sunset golden hour look, so I'm going to find a room that has a different ambiance. There are a lot you can choose from. Some of them have amazing shadows, like this one here. This room is a little bit too pink for what I want to do, but it'd be rad in the 80s theme edit. I'm going to use this room. It has a really beautiful sunset with a directional light that's really nice and glowy. I'm going to set down a standing note so I can edit the direction Zoe is facing. I found two avatars that I really love, so I'm going to use both of them and edit the poses together in GIMP. I love the upper body pose of one, and I love the lower body pose of the other. Setting down my own standing node allows me to keep Zoe facing towards the sun, because we want it to match up for editing later. So I'm going to put this pose on and rotate her a little bit so her hand is away from her body, and then tilt her head slightly so she's looking at the camera. And to take the snapshot without the background, type star high res, no BG. This will capture the ambiance and lighting of the room on your avatar, but turn it into a PNG with a transparent background. Now I'm putting on the second pose and doing the same thing. I'm using the line down the center of her midriff for reference and matching up the angle as best I can here. Now we get to the editing. Here are the snapshots I took on my desktop. I like to start by combining the background just to get the general canvas shape going. High res snapshots are 2048 by 2048. So I'm going to make a canvas with a width of 2048 pixels wide and 3000 pixels high. I suggest making larger edits so you can fit more detail into it and have a higher quality outcome. Hit OK. Now drag and drop your screenshots onto your canvas. Using the move tool, you want to move these into place. I took two screenshots to have more space in the middle of my canvas. The ocean will be easy to blend together. So I want to talk to you very briefly before we get started about non-destructive editing. And what I mean by that is using layers and layer masks. A layer is like a piece of glass that you put over your original image where you can put all your color, your shadow, your detail without actually touching the image underneath. A layer mask is kind of like another layer that you put over that where you can make it transparent or opaque by painting on it in either black or white. Let me show you what I mean. Creating a layer mask allows you to hide some of the layer without actually deleting it. Make a layer mask with white or full opacity. Black is transparent and white is opaque. So to delete one image for another, you want to paint well, on the correct layer first of all. We might as well add a layer mask to the other image as well. So paint with a fluffy round brush to delete the image. I'm using air quotes here, you're not actually erasing it. I like to use fluffy brushes because they create a more blended look with less of a harsh edge. You can also use a black and transparent or white gradient to blend the two seamlessly. If you mess up, you can just paint white to reveal the image under the mask. Now that our background is roughly put together, let's go ahead and get the avatar onto the canvas. Drag and drop your screenshots onto the canvas. I'm going to use the top half from one screenshot and the bottom half from another. Let's line them up roughly so the waistlines are matched up. That's where I'm going to join these two poses together. You can do this with arms, feet, hands, heads. I've done it with eyes and mouths. Sometimes you just need to change a little part and don't want to go through the process of changing the whole pose. So this trick really comes in handy. I'm going to do the same thing that I did with the background and put a layer mask over both screenshots with full white opacity and delete the top part of one and the bottom part of the other by painting over the layer mask with a black paintbrush. Now that our avatar is merged, I'm going to start retouching. I've gone ahead and applied the layer masks by right-clicking the layer and selecting Apply Layer Mask. I don't need to make any more changes to the avatar's pose, so I'm going to go ahead and merge these two layers together and work from one layer now, just to keep my layers panel organized. I'm renaming the layer to Zoe, and I'm going to start a folder called Avatar that will have all of my retouching layers inside of it. You can do the same thing for the background. Keeping your files named and organized makes it so much easier to work with. One of my favorite tricks is to do the light dodging and burning of highlight and shadows. To do this, I'm going to make a new layer and set the blending mode to overlay. Don't worry about the fill layer. You can have it transparent or a solid color because we're just going to fill the layer with a 50% gray. In the color selection window, type 80, 80, 80 as the hex value and use the paint bucket tool to fill the layer. You can see immediately that the layer appears transparent but if you draw on the layer, for example, with a brush, you can still see it comes through. This allows you to paint and edit your avatar without actually painting onto it, so if you mess up, you're not touching the original layer. 
We want to contain this painting to just the avatar, not the entire gray area. So you'll probably notice a theme here. We're gonna use a layer mask, yep. To quickly select the shape of your avatar, since that's what we want to be painting over, just use the fuzzy select tool. It looks like a magic wand. Make sure you're on the avatar layer and click on the area outside the avatar. You can see it's selected all of the area except for the avatar. White is opaque, black is transparent. But we want to select just the avatar and not the rest of the layer. So simply go to the select tab and choose invert. Now the area we will be able to see, the white area, is shaped like our avatar and the area we want to be invisible is black. This trick is great for adding lighting to your avatar and blending them into the scene more realistically. But today we're using it to amp up our shadows and highlights. I went ahead and put a mask around the Zoe layer as well while I'm at it. It'll come in handy for the next step. So now that I have my burn tool selected and making sure it's on burn mode, I'm gonna start amplifying the shadows that are already present in the skin. I'm keeping a light hand because it's easy to go overboard with this. We're just trying to enhance, not reconstruct. And I'm not being super careful here because I'm gonna go over the smudge tool to blend out those strokes. For areas where you need more precise shadow or highlight, I suggest using the pen tool. So the pen or the path tool and the layer masks are the most important things that you can take away from this. If you can master these two things, it'll make a huge difference in your workflow. I'm selecting just the area around her neck because I wanna set it off from her head a little bit to create some more depth here, focusing on the corners and just under the chin. One of the good things about using the pen tool like this is you can really get the details and the sharp edge without using something like a Wacom tablet. I'm just using my uh, laptop's trackpad right now. Again, you'll want to smudge it out, but you can already see the difference a little bit of burning can do. I like to go lightly over the areas of the face that have shadow. I think of it like contouring for your face if you're into makeup at all, just that we're using the avatar's skin tone as a guide for where to place it. I'm adding some shadow in other areas that would be naturally darker, like the underside of her hair. Play around with it, you know, think about where the light is hitting or what you want to achieve with your lighting. A high fashion look might have a more severe shadow, so play around with the path tool and burning selectively. Next, we're going to use the dodge tool by switching the type in the tool panel on the left. I like to use a high opacity and a very small brush to pinpoint spots of light around the face. Tip of the nose, bridge of the nose, around the eyes, lips, nostrils, Anywhere you might see some natural glow on the face. I increase the size of the brush for larger areas and tap on areas that are already highlighted just to increase the contrast. For larger areas, I decrease the opacity and drag the brush across, smudging and blending out as I go until I reach the desired amount of glow. For reshaping areas, I suggest creating a layer underneath your avatar and creating the new shape with the path tool. Create a shape to fill the areas you'd like to touch up. For example, I like to go around the wrists as they can start to look a little pinchy, especially with hand scalers on. Select the area from Path and Select Tab, and choose a color that matches the area you're trying to blend. Then, using the smudge tool, blend in the area. Usually, I like to do this step first before I make the overlay layer or put any of the masks on, just so I get the full shape of the avatar and then I can blend the avatar layer into this new shape I made, but this is a pretty minor fix, so it's not really a big deal. For larger areas, I definitely recommend doing this step first before any other retouching. For the last bit of retouching, I wanna smooth out some of the shadows on her face, which can tend to look like dirt smudges when you're not wearing a body light. There's usually a part around the neck where there's a small seam, and the shoulders, wrists, and ankles usually have a seam as well. And then this area where I connected the two screenshots is going to have just a little bit of a seam. I'm going to use the smudge tool just to blur out these areas, using a light hand to preserve as much of the texture in the skin as possible. Because we created a mask around the layer, I don't have to worry about blending outside of the edge of the avatar. Alright, let's go back to the background. We have a good base going. Mostly, I just wanted to use that beautiful blue ocean and maybe put a pink and orange sunset in to keep it bright and vibrant. To do that, I'm gonna use a real life stock photo and blend it into the InView background. But first, I wanna set down a base to make the background blend easier. I'm going to lay a gradient down using a pastel orange and pink gradient. Then I want to blend that with the InView sky. I'm gonna add, wait, can you guess? A layer mask and use the black to transparent gradient to fade those two into each other. Then I'm gonna blend out the harsh edge with a fluffy brush and low opacity. To create the sunset, you can paint it yourself using custom brushes, which I often do. Sometimes I use an InView sky as well. Or you can blend in real-life stock photos. 
You can find high quality free photos from pexels.com. Just make sure you check the licensing requirements. I've chosen my stock photos that I want to blend into the image, and now I just want to start merging the background together. Using layer masks, I'm going to paint away the part of the image until it's blended the way I want. Then I'm going to create a layer under the stock photo and over the in-view background, change the blending mode to screen, and pick up some colors from the sky to blend it even further. Next, I'm going to create another layer over the stock photo, change the blend mode to soft light, and intensify those colors even more. I'm using teals, oranges, and pinks to tie everything together with a light touch and low opacity. Then I'm going to do the same with a sky stock photo. Create a layer mask and blend away with a soft, low opacity black brush so the in-view scene beneath comes through. I think you can really see the image coming together now with glowy Zoe and our sunset background. I'm going to finish this piece off with some more layers of color using different blending modes to bring out the ambiance and boost the colors even more. I'm also going to search online for brushes and other free resources that I can use to add some extra details. Alright guys, that's it for the video. I hope you're able to take something away from this and be able to use it in your own edits. This is my first time using GIMP, so if I mess up, feel free to make fun of me in the comments below. If you like it, give it a thumbs up so I know I did a good job. Remember to use the hashtag TopEditTuesday on Instagram so we can see your art. Alright, thanks for watching guys. See you next time.